Fabula Rasa, bitches. Hello, hello. Hello. My name is Allie. And I'm Nick. And welcome to Season 1, Episode 12 of Tabula Rasa, bitches. We're so glad you are here for our Season 1 finale. <laughs> this is nuts. It's great night. Here we are. I know. We did it. Nick, we, we did it. We made a podcast. And what a joy it's been, Allie J. Jones. It has been lovely. In Tabula Rasa, bitches, you'll listen as two decades-long friends jump back into the world of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and relive the show the problem puts together and taught them so many of the values they still cherish today. Our rose, vast audience of many listeners will be familiar with this disclaimer at this point, but we are going to be discussing this episode spoilers and all if you haven't watched and you don't want to hear spoilers hit the pause button go do your watching and come back we can't wait for you to return yes yes we'll be waiting like dogs waiting for their owners to return home uh each episode of tabula rasa bitches will dive into an episode of buffy the vampire slayer and discuss the lessons that can be learned from our favorite sunnydale warriors and the supernatural creatures they use and the supernatural creatures they use their talents and friendship to overcome God, I like forgot where I was for a moment. So that happened to you. Uh, today we'll be discussing season one, episode twelve, Prophecy Girl, and oh, what a great episode! What a, what a great a episode! Solid finale. Fantastic end to a fantastic season. Okay, so in this episode, Xander finally gets the nerve to ask Buffy out, and she feels bad when she has to tell him she doesn't feel that way about him. Things get far worse, though, when she overhears Giles and Angel discussing the prophecy, saying that the Master's Ascension is at hand and that she will die trying to stop him. At this, she shouts out, telling Giles that she quits. But the vampires are growing stronger, and after an attack at the school that leaves Willow in particular shaken, Buffy decides it is time to face the Master. She is led to him by the Anointed One and is quickly overcome, the Master draining her blood and leaving her face down in water. Xander finds Angel, telling him that she has gone to face the Master, and the pair set off to help, arriving to find her apparently dead. Xander, however, performs CPR, and Buffy awakes, feeling stronger than ever. Meanwhile, Giles, Willow, Cordelia, and Miss Calendar are fighting off vampires in a huge monster that has burst forth from the Hellmouth at the school. Buffy arrives back at the school to face the Master again, and this time wins, throwing him through a glass roof onto a wooden shard below. The monster disappears back into the home elf, and the gang retire to the prom at the bronze. Woo! Whoop! What a summary. Grateful to Buffy Guide for helping me finish it. Yes, thank you, friends, over there. So, first note I have, uh, as, you know, the episode was starting, it had the episode rating, like the content watcher rating or whatever, you know, like PG or whatever, and it had... Something about violence, and it ha- and it said sexual content. What? And I was like, I don't, I have no idea what you're referring to. Is there sexual content? No, here? I mean, we briefly at the beginning see Cordelia parked with her boyfriend, but they're like briefly kissing and then break apart because she hears something. That's it. That's the extent. Um, Buffy looks sexually delicious in her prom dress. Right, I, but, but other... I don't think that's what they're talking about. Right. So I. I don't know where that came from. Um, also, sometimes sometimes I have found that certain shows, like, they have a blanket warning for just the show, so it doesn't necessarily pertain to that certain episode. I mean, until we get to, like, it's really not until, like, fourth season that we get, like, a lot of it. But We have an expletive warning on our podcast, but that's for the whole thing. And to be fair, true. we probably cuss in all of them. But that's strange. I don't remember sexual content from this episode. Definitely not this episode. So, Mm. weird. My first note is, so in the opening scene, Xander is practicing his go out with me conversation to Buffy, Mm -hmm. but he's practicing on Willow. And I am just thinking, man, this has to be a hard conversation for Willow as somebody who likes Xander. Uh, Yeah, that's my note. Oh, God, poor Willow sitting through Xander practicing. I mean, just... (sighs) I don't know, as someone who has liked many men in her, boys, really, in in her lifetime, (laughs) I always have to wonder, can they really be that thick? Like, can they really, can you really be that oblivious to Willow's feelings? Really? Really? Yeah, 
either you're stupid or you don't care. Which is worse? I mean, I guess if I had to pick, I would say I'd pr- I prefer you just be stupid uh, rather than not caring. I guess that's what he has to be because it's like, I guess he just doesn't know. He's referenced, though, in the pack. He referenced, he made some sort of reference that at least evil Xander, when he yeah. was taking the Black Hyena Spirit, knew. That's true. That, so is this just, is he, I, I don't know. I think it's willful ignorance. I think it's willful ignorance. Yeah, and just sense. like the lies we tell ourselves of like, oh, she must not, she must be over it. I mean, we still hang out, and she knows we're friends, so she must know. She must have moved on by this point. She had to. Yeah, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Um, did you ever park in high school? Sure did. Look at you. Where'd you yeah. go? I did a few times. Uh, let's see, one time I went to a, a park and ride. During broad daylight, that wasn't very smart. <laughs> One time, I I parked on Pudding Lane. Oh, cute. Yeah, parked there once. I went to Pudding Lane with my driver's ed instructor to practice driving. To practice driving, we practiced. <laughs> we practiced three point turns because it was a it was a nice like empty dead end to practice three yeah. point turns to turn around. And it, I, it was and a I good in one, my yeah. head, I was like, wow. I'm, at Pudding Lane. I'm finally at Pudding Lane, but it's with my driver's ed instructor. <laughs> oh, the famous hookup spot uh, for people who lived in Burley Manor. Yeah. So, yeah. I uh, I mean, I have parked. It was not in high school. It was in college. Hmm. Yeah, I parked in college, too. Those Towson, Towson parking garages. The uh, So, we're now in the scene where Cordelia is, yeah, making out with the dude in mm-hmm. the car, and then we see Buffy's having having this fight with this vampire Mm -hmm. i think this fight scene is cool she has this like helpless look and then she pulls out her stake and Mm -hmm. looks really devious and then then the vampire clearly gets scared too yeah it's like this is gonna be a good episode i thought that was great and i was like buff smiling fighting this vampire like is she she enjoying slaying now she kind of feels like she's finding her rhythm she's like three vamps in a night she's crushing it she is she's crushing it yes badass yeah, and then we have the earthquake. Uh, do you, Nicholas, know what to do in an earthquake? I know intellectually what to do in an earthquake. There was there was a hot minute in Maryland where <laughs> yeah. there was a very, very tiny earthquake. Yes. And I'm pretty sure that I was a fool. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I noted when Xander is like, under the stairs, quick. Right. He's like, okay, that's, yeah. wow, you thought quickly there. I was just disappointed in Giles because... He's around a lot of things. So his first move should have been for a doorway. Yeah. That's what. So, dear listeners, if you don't know what to do in an earthquake, you are supposed to find a doorway because it is a structurally sound area and there's nothing to fall on your head. That is what you're supposed to do. That's a great PSA. Thank you, Allie. Yeah. Yeah. For such a smart dude that he he didn't act very smart. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's lived in California long. So I can kind of see. But just it did. It did seem like he was sitting just kind of sitting still watching that cup surely rattle off of the desk for a little while. I do remember that earthquake before senior year of high school, and I didn't even register it as an earthquake until people were talking about it later. Um, I was at lunch with a friend, and I remember us being like, was that that a truck rumbling by? Is there construction going on? Like, it was so, it was, I mean, things like, like there were some pictures on the wall that like kind of rattled. But there was definitely nothing like came crashing down or anything like that. So, and, you know, Maryland, we're not known for earthquakes. Yeah. I was in the middle of a theater camp with Aww. 25 children who were not thrilled with the wall shaking. Which yeah. Is there. And then I have also rut row because earthquakes, not great. Ominous, right? They are, a, yeah, they are, they portend foul things. Although, you know, if you live in California, they don't, they're, they're not uncommon, but. I think this line from the master is funny. He's he goes glory, glory, <laughs> and then he goes. I, I'm I'm pretty sure I heard him right. He goes, "What do you think? Five point one? Yeah." And I'm I think that this is implicitly acknowledging that even though he's one of the most ancient vampires who's been underground forever, right? He doesn't know about the Richter scale. Yes, I had that same thought of like, oh, and we've had a few other moments where he references things that are like kind of modern, Cinderella. Yeah, right, exactly, Cinderella, Cinderella, which is, I mean, if you really look at the history, it's not modern to us, 
but those lyrics are yeah so this yeah like the overall story of cinderella is very old but he i mean he's like one of the oldest vampires so yeah so he must have i don't know tv maybe maybe they're he's very well read good for him i guess yeah someone comes down and I like to picture them having kind of like family dinner kind of style. And then sort of the way that like your kids get up and like put on a show for you. He just has the other vampires just like come up and like put on a show. Like he's been down there for a really long time. Like, and he's clearly sassy. He likes entertainment and stuff. So like, I don't know. I feel like that's got to happen or someone's bringing books and they're, and it's not all like doom and gloom. It's not like he's just sitting around reading Bram Stoker's Dracula. So no, he's got to stay up state somehow. Yeah. I love, I love picturing that silly stuff. Um, does Buffy look a little older to you, even from just like from episode one? Yeah, and that has to be a function of her hair and clothing. I think so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I and it's and sort of just like that's changed. her deportment, like just like how mm-hmm. the way she carries herself. I think just picturing this day to like back to first day of school, Buffy definitely. There's just something that looks feels older about her. Yeah, feels like the first day of school was so long ago. Yeah, it, uh, it even though it was only eleven episodes ago, it does feel like there's been so, we've learned so much. I I want to process this conversation between Xander and Buffy because that there's like a lot to unpack there. But Ooh, the first wait, question, wait, 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 wait. Uh, oh, something before I, then? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have I I just I love some good juxtaposition. So I love when Buffy comes in, and so Giles has found the prophecy. He knows that she's gonna die. And Buffy's coming in like, oh my gosh, like, look at all these vampires. I broke a nail. This is a press on. I love that. Because like <laughs> she <laughs> she is serious in her mind, but compared to what Giles is serious is about, like, it comes off very silly. So it's just like, I just love some good juxtaposition. And I love Willow's quote when they're walking out of biology. She says, it's the computer age. Nerds are in. You're so right. You're even more more right now in 2022 than she was in 1997 nerds were in then and they're even more in now yeah they were they yes, were Willow. starting to be in and now i say i say we have successfully inherited the nerds have so. inherited i think um and i like i like xander going up to the kid on the bench hey leave <laughs> so i don't know if you remember club penguin but in middle school this so dates me in middle school, Mikey Stein and I used to meet up on Club Penguin after school, and we would <laughs> go up to people sitting at a table and tell them to leave. <laughs> and we would like agree on a person, follow them around, and throw snowballs at them. It's so rude. <laughs> and then it was terrible. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. I I have done some <laughs> snowball bullying in Club Penguin in my day as yeah. well. Oh, time. that is funny. Hey, leave. Oh, <laughs> if only, if only I had that power. Early on in the pandemic, Club Penguin came back and I was on there for... We played it together. Yeah. yeah, we played it for... Yeah, we had a little date. That hot sec. Yeah, that was fun. I forgot. Good I had forgot that that even happened until just now. Ugh, good okay, so, oof, yeah, let's unpack this. Asking someone out. Oof. Um. Well, what I want to... It's not just asking somebody out. He is full on confessing his attraction to mm-hmm. a close friend yep the question i have for you ali is when have you left somebody out on a date and did it go well initially yes eighth grade fall of eighth grade i asked out nick over here which i we had a day we had a day off for <laughs> we had a day off for whatever reason uh conferences or something so i was like hey we have off school you want to go see a movie with me and he said yes and I remember, like, running into play practice after that. I'm like, yes! I did yes, it! I am a god! It's like, just, yeah, I did it! It felt like I was on top of the world. Everything was amazing. I felt so accomplished because I'd been stealing myself for it all day. So the next day comes up. I'm, like, horrified. Oh, my God. Now I have to actually, like, go through with it and, like, talk to this person. Like, just the asking out. I saw this in a TV show when they were, like, actually, I was, like, ready to ask them out, but I wasn't actually ready to go out with them. Yeah, there's a whole piece after that once they say, yeah, then you've just gotten started. Right. So I actually had to, like, call him the next day and be like, so, uh, when do you want to go see a movie? What do you want to see? And he was like, oh, actually, uh, I have football today. God damn it. Which is, like, how like a guy. But also, at the same time, hugely relieved. 
So, yeah. Because you didn't have to go after all. Yeah, exactly. Um, And then I did a bit of, like, wasn't quite asking out. It was, like, playing the long game, the subtle long game of asking to hang out. Junior year of high school, I had a guy in band that I was trying to express my interest. So, um, you know, hey, a friend's birthday's coming up. You want to bake with me for her? And then that's when I realized that, like, baking simple things like cookies takes, like, 10 minutes. And I was like, crap. No, that's sly, though. Okay. Yeah. You got some dates. Well, and then and there was another day that we had been texting about, like, favorite movies or something. And I was like, oh, well, you haven't seen my favorite movie. I haven't seen your favorite movie. What if we got together and watched them? Oh. So after that, I felt like I had very successfully expressed my interest. Allie's got some game. Well, I mean, he didn't ask me out. So, I mean, well, but. But he did. It turns out I found out years later because we're still friends. It turns out he did get the message that I liked him. Right. And I was like, cool, because my dad had said, like, well, did you ever actually tell him you like him? Then you haven't done everything. And I was like, fair point. But I was like, I feel like if he also liked me, that was enough that he should have felt encouraged to then do his part. Well, Xander certainly did everything here. That's yes. For sure. And that's why I'm very proud of him, because like in some of the earlier episodes, he was kind of like, am I invisible? Like, what am I just, you know, and I was like, well, you got to you got to ovary up and just actually lay it out. And he does. To his credit, he does. Uh, I'm not proud of him. I thought he was a giant man, baby. Um, yeah. I mean. Can I read this quote? Yes. Can I read these two quotes? Go for it. I guess a guy has to be undead to make time with you. Yes. Awful. You're a little bitch. Right. You are a little bitch. But he he does follow it up when she's like, Xander. He does follow it up with like, sorry, I don't take rejection well. So it's And like, then he says, buddy, I guess considering the practice I had. Right. You so, are a little yeah. bitch. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I'm not thrilled with you in this moment, Xander. And and Buffy has been incredibly graceful. Oh yeah. Yeah. She is as gentle as possible while still being clear. And she knows from the second how she feels, she's very gentle about like yep. Buffy. This was a master class from Buffy, I think, in yeah. this moment. No, because yeah. But I do like his quote when he's asking her out. He says, But I want more. I want to dance with you. Ugh, I just I love that. That I want to dance with you. Like mm. <laughs> I love a good slow dance. He's sweet until he gets rejected, and then right. and, and we then have seen he... we have seen this a few times where Xander gets a little pissy. Yeah, um, but I guess I also like he's sixteen. Not to say like boys will be boys, but like teenagers will be teenagers. Buffy's also right. sixteen, and she handles things flawlessly. Well, she has also had an awful lot put on her shoulders. She's have to be, she has been made to be more mature than uh, her age requires but i i do agree we should hold everyone to higher standards and he was not great mm. okay fair enough yeah Some, sometimes that's my sometimes that's my problem i give a little too too much credit to people mm. i like that about you thanks uh my next note is jenny calendar her quote that says uh i would say the end is pretty seriously nigh <laughs> and i said my, my quote my note next that was everyone in 2020 slash 2021 yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god yeah. oh lord yeah. plague uh, pestilence natural disasters political upheaval political upheaval uh, uh-huh. if you're looking for signs we had them have them i just want precedented times i just yeah. want times to be precedented that's it yeah 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 oh lord i liked when uh, some comedian had a quote of like yeah, there used to be a time where someone would be like, hey, did you hear what the president said last night? And I'd be like, no. Sure didn't. No idea. No idea right? what he no, said. No clue. He probably said something about, I don't know, trade agreements. So my next one is, did they just have a dance? They do have a lot of those, don't they? It, yeah, was, like what... two, it was like two episodes ago they were having the It was the last game. episode. Yeah, it was It was actually the last. Yeah, out You're of You're right, because it was out of mind, out of sight. You're right. So, yeah, so this one, what did they call this one? They call this, it's their version of the prom. And then they just had the, so. it, like, Cordelia was being crowned. For something. May Queen. May Queen. Yeah. May Queen. So this is potentially two dances in the same month. Yeah. Wow. I guess it could be June. No, you don't have prom in June. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess May would be literally in May. Prom could theoretically be in June because some some schools really do have it like 
the last two weeks of school. Oh, interesting. It did. But they don't, but they're not talking about the end of the school year. They're just talking about prom, but they don't call it prom because that's a weird thing is that like later on, like her senior year, they do have literally, they call it prom. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, and I don't know, some schools are so small that they invite the whole school to prom, but not everybody does. See? Um, And then sometimes they have junior prom and senior prom. I like the way our school did it of having prom for juniors and seniors. Yeah, me too. Well, you I need mean, more people funny. to pack. You need more people to pack the dance floor. Otherwise, people won't dance. So weird. Um, okay, I love Willow once again standing up for herself. Oh my god, I have the same quote that I think you're about to read. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. I didn't write down a quote. I just said Willow again standing up for herself. I love it. Yeah. So um, Willow has found Xander in an empty classroom who is despondent over having been rejected by Buffy and then Xander said Xander says something like oh why don't we go together we should go together and then Willow says I love this quote from her she says you think I want to go to the dance with you and watch you wish you were at the dance with her oh Willow yeah so good yeah I love that I love boundaries yep at 16 that shows such a great presence of mind we are going to be nobody's second choice no right absolutely and then I have the, the quote from Xander afterwards that I have thought of many times in my life. I'm just going to go home, lie down, and listen to country music. The music of pain. See, Xander, we got to the mature response. Yes, go. Right. Be sad. Totally. Yeah, I definitely, my first breakup ever, that quote was rolling around in my head so often. I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to listen to some, to some D- Dixie Chicks. Because they have a lot. They have both the like, Oh, I'm so sad. Nothing's ever going to be good again. But then they also have the like, I'll burn your house down. Yeah. So it's really because it gets you kind of like all of it. The range of emotions. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So in this next scene where um, Buffy blood is coming out of the faucet and she's Mm -hmm. like being Giles is going to have a field day with this. Then she she overhears Giles telling Angel the prophecy that she's Mm going to die. The reaction. Mm -hmm. like this is to me this scene where she's like throwing she's having a meltdown is the most powerful acting in the whole season it is such a beautiful scene i have that as a note i love that we have the laugh from her Mm because i think that's really human Mm -hmm. that's my problem with certain movies these days where things are just like dark start to finish because that's just not human nature People laugh when they should cry and like people make crack jokes at a funeral like that's just Mm -hmm. what people do because your brain doesn't you don't have any choice over how you react to something like you don't have any say over your first thought Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i just i do i love that scene um and i love angel says something and she says i quit remember pay attention yeah yeah i love that snap just defiant yeah right yeah i love that um and before with the bloody sink i wrote down lol bloody sink insert period joke here true True. (laughs) oh that's funny if you know you know you've been there um so it always bugged me how she could just yank the necklace off you've noted this before you're like is that chain not gonna break is it not in recording i don't think i mean like when but it's definitely something that Allie has had a problem with her whole life yeah Uh, now there is slayer strength okay i'll give you that but then when you see the necklace on the ground it is intact the clasp is intact. I'm like, I just, I just don't buy it. And I, I don't buy how Sarah Michelle Geller could yank it off without it being a specially rigged necklace for like a magnetic clasp or something like that. I'm sure it was movie magic, but like, these are the annoying, stupid thoughts that uh, distract me from this actual is the story. End. <laughs> these are your boundaries of where you can and cannot suspend your disbelief. When yeah. it comes to jewelry, you didn't just take that off. I know you didn't. I, I don't you believe didn't. you. I don't believe you. You'd have like a scratch on your neck before you'd actually get it off your neck. So I have a question. Okay. I wonder if it's the same question I have. Recognizing that Giles is in an impossible situation here, he's just found out that this student that he loves and that he's been tasked with protecting is going to die. Mm-hmm. Do we not think it would have been a better move to communicate about it like say like do we not well i can see his side if he can find something 
that contradicts the prophecy, if he can find a way to something that would make it not happen, why tell her and have her worry before? Not telling and not saying anything until he has all the information. Yeah. And I mean, I guess it does make sense. I'm not clear what context Angel provided because he's not a watcher. But I mean, running it well, over because he was because he was able to find the colleagues. codex and stuff. And yeah, he, yeah, he found the book history with pro- prophecies yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I guess that. Yeah. And I he's another he person was. who cares very deeply about Buffy and would do anything to keep her alive. So I can see Giles pulling him in as an asset. And he has knowledge of the master. He has knowledge of other vampires. Like, I certainly get him not telling Willow or Xander. Like, that would be a huge betrayal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he told them before. I'm just seeing this traumatic thing play out. And I'm like, could we have done anything differently? And maybe not. It just really sucks that she walked in at that time. Yeah, I'm not saying that, like, not communicating is the best choice. And maybe he, maybe you should have, you know, maybe we'll find something together to counteract this prophecy or whatever. But I can see how Giles got to that choice. Mm-hmm. Like maybe, maybe it wasn't the best choice. I do think it's always better to know and then work stuff out afterwards. Like yeah. just give me all of the information. Um, I'd rather you just tell me. But I do see, I see how Giles got there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my question to you is, you die tomorrow night. What do you do? I know that I'm going to die tomorrow night. Right. Like you just ended up in Buffy's situation. You're going to die tomorrow night. What are you going to do? Mm. What do you do with your last 24 hours? Uh, I a thousand percent do what she tried to do and like leave and avoid. I, 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 you know, yeah, I really like working, but I do like being alive. Most right. Times. Yeah. You know, so, like, I'd rather not. I'm not I guess like, it really depends on what is. Uh, is it like? Is it? The... Is it like? Uh, because we see. Okay, I'm not going to think if I were in Buffy's situation because there are duties to friend. Like, if if Buffy didn't face the master, then she thought her friends were going to die, and that like didn't fit. Right. Like, she that's thought, she thought the world would end, or if you told me, happen. Nick, your part is going to stop in 24 hours. You have 24 hours. Right. I would, man, what to I would would I commit some crimes? That could be fun. Would I go out and spend all my money on things? Would I I get I get do you like how the third thing I mentioned is tell my family I love them? <laughs> they know. They know I love them. Um yeah. mm, that is a good question, Allie. What would you do? You had to have thought through some things. Kind of. So like assuming it's like my life today, not like back when I was like sixteen. Well, first of all, I would make my boyfriend take off work. I think <laughs> yeah. I would, I, I wouldn't tell anybody because then it, they're going to like be weird about it. You better tell me. No. Yeah, bitch, no, you better tell me. I have things weird. to say to you. I have things to say to you. If it's my last opportunity, you better tell me. Maybe I would tell just you, but like, I don't. Because then what do you do? Does everyone gather for a meal and everyone's awkward about like either trying to say what they need to get off their chest or they don't know how to talk? Like, I, I would just want like one last hangout with everybody. No, I totally gather. No, I gather. No, I, I would gather. I know I would gather. No, I but... gather saying I'm going to die. Give me compliments. Tell me I'm pretty. Mm. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. I just don't want any- everybody like trying to stop it or like i don't know making about how sad they are like oh i just don't want like whatever your reaction is ruining my last day no 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 you better cry you better cry no i don't want to be around a whole bunch of people crying and then we're gonna like turn up and have a good time i just i just don't think that's how it would play out well this is my reality it can be what i want to like go fuck that's true so i would i would eat all my favorite foods Mm -hmm. fuck obviously Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, drugs. I think. Yeah, why not? Right. Right. Like, oh, what is it going to do? Kill me? <laughs> 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 like, find some ecstasy. Just be on ecstasy, ecstasy all day. Maybe try LSD. Trip my balls so that I forget that I'm even gonna die that night, and then I get to just like slip off. Solid. Okay. Well. Yeah. Look forward to never being in that situation. Hell yeah. Um. <laughs> I love 
Joyce, see, sometimes I do know what you're thinking. I wrote down that quote too. Yeah. So Buffy is looking through photo albums and Joyce is like. Joyce thinks it's about the dance. Yeah. And it's. It kind of is about the dance in a way. Kind of, yeah. It's just, I, I thought that this, yeah, this exchange they had was really interesting. Because when she says, see, sometimes I actually do know what you're thinking, she's kind of right. Like, kind of, yeah. Buffy is mulling over that. Because it sort of is about, like, her friends and the dance and wishing she could just be normal. And she even said, it's so heartbreaking when her mom's, like, tell, tells her about her dance the night that she went and she's like Buffy's like oh and you had your whole life ahead of her ahead of you and she's like yeah I did she says that must be nice I wrote that same note I said this scene is so nice and also so heartbreaking yeah and I also and Joyce just all these pearls says who is it written somewhere saying that like you can't go by yourself oh like it says who where is it written because I am a proponent of like just fuck it do doing stuff you know go see a movie by yourself like who says you can't take yourself to dinner or whatever, like those kinds of things. And probably interesting for Buffy to hear that because she's like, actually, yes, it is written that I'm going right. to die. Exactly. Exactly. Just a lot of those like, oh, Joyce, if you only knew what you were talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the dress. Oh, I love that dress. Uh, friends, you will see on our social media pictures of me at Dragon Con circa 2012, I think in my Prophecy Girl dress that the lovely Emily Luking made me. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yep. I didn't I did know a... about that. I didn't know she made you a dress. But, hey, yes, yes. The, so that dress was made by Emily. Well? I commissioned it. Yeah, because remember, like, in high school, she used to make her own um, Halloween costumes. Like, she made a Victorian. Yeah, Not true. Victorian. A re- she made a Renaissance dress, like, senior year. God, she's that was so gorgeous. fucking talented. She God. is. So, yeah, I bought a mini crossbow, leather jacket. Yeah. I'm excited. Look at the social media. I mean, now. it's like not the best executed cosplay ever, but like you get to see little 18 year old Allie cosplaying one of her favorite Buffy outfits. I'm sure it's brilliant. So the next scene, so we we skipped over, but Willow and Cordelia are doing something at the school, and they find this horrific scene where the lounge massacre. Oh, yeah, vampires have just brutally murdered them and and we have seen a lot of messed up things but willow is so shaken so shaken yeah well she talks about with buffy later like this is one of their places this is you know i guess maybe at some schools they had like a student lounge i I don't think we did or if we did we were too busy to ever go there and again we have some great juxtaposition of the Looney Tunes playing on the TV with the bloody handprint. Just off. It's very eerie. Very mm-hmm. eerie. Yeah. And I I just think so when Buffy is is there comforting Willow at Willow's house, I just think it's so powerful in telling of Buffy that she was hellbent on quitting being the Slayer. She asked her mom to leave. Yeah. But she saw that her friend was horrified and deeply disturbed. And right. she said... What she said something like, I'll take care of it, or we take right. care of it, or we, it's just, yeah. oh, so powerful. Yeah. Well, and it harkens back to early, maybe even first or second episode when Willow sticks up for Buffy to Cordelia. Cause it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not willing to stick it, stick it out for me. Like, fuck it, I'll die. You're right. Yeah. Or like, I don't care about my life, but now you're threatening the people around me, those I love, and that's not okay. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah, Willow is like, she's not crazy. She, yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, Buffy's repaying now here. Oh, yeah. God, I love full circle. And limits. just that they made it theirs and they had fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now we see Jenny Calendar trying to, uh, confronting Giles. Like, hey, some stuff is up. Don't tell me it's not. Trust me, I'm integrated. And so I said, uh, it's so weird that it's Buffy. She's so little. Like, well, fuck you, Jenny. <laughs> Disparaging <laughs> short people. <laughs> fuck you. Jenny, come on. She'll kick your ass. She will. I'll kick your Do you ass. Do you want to see Jenny. the demons she's still Like, come on. Yeah. Sit down. Take several seats. Yeah. So I have this thought of like, what? So what would happen if Buffy just stayed home? I guess if that's the thing about prophecies is that like, well, 
that's not what happens. So hence the prophecy is fulfilled. But it's like, what if she did just like stay home watching TV? Yeah, you can get, I feel like we can get ourselves into such a mental loop here because uh -huh. we, we find out that Master can't break out. Without Buffy's blood because it's the strength of her blood that lets him out. So then what would, it, yeah, so what happens if she... She didn't stay home, but she didn't stay home. Yeah, man. Right. Can get I think it confusing. is. I think it is one of those things of like, well, she wouldn't, and yeah. that's why the prophecy comes true. Is that that's the thing? Is that like she doesn't? Yeah, especially after seeing how disturbed Willow is. Yeah, she's gonna go hunt this dude that did that to her friend. Yeah. Um. There's this quote here. Think of something cool. Mm -hmm. Tell him I said it. When yep, I had that written down too. Giles, yeah, Giles is like, Giles is like, no, I'm going to go face the master. And Buffy's like, no, you're not. He's like, yes, I am. And mm -hmm. she's like, okay. And then she knocks him out. Um, this is a dark story. You can edit it out if this is too dark. I remember okay. my first job out of college. I taught sex education. I would go into schools and teach sex this. education. Yeah. So my first. Your bag of dildos. My, I did have a bag of dildos. Yeah, Love that it. was some of my favorite Snapchats. My, um, my, my first time teaching, literally my first day teaching in any sort of program was at the summer camp in, in a school. And there was this gun scare. Like somebody was on the ground somewhere with a gun or something. And it ended up being nothing. But mm -hmm. it was like everybody went into lockdown. I didn't know what I was doing. It was my first day, whatever. Which, man, also, can we talk about schooling in America? Yikes. I remember texting my boyfriend at the time being like, hi, there's a gun scare. I'm under a desk. If something happens, tell my family. I yeah, think of something cool and tell my family I said, it. I, said it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Just ways of coping with low key trauma. Oh, yeah. You know, like being serious isn't going to make it go away. So yeah, true. Days will have fun with it. Why not? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I probably would have said something similar. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so the anointed one is leading Buffy off. And I just had this thought of like, it's kind of a while to the mausoleum. Uh, you're just going to hold hands the whole way. Yeah. <laughs> but, may but maybe there's an entrance that's closer. <laughs> and I just had this thought of like, so do you think they like talked at all on right, the Right, what's that there? small talk look like? Yeah. Right? Like, or do they small talk at all? Or, or is it just like Buffy has so many thoughts going through her head like that she's just like not even entertaining conversation? But I don't know. <laughs> I I don't love this anointed one storyline i feel yeah. like i um looking back i he doesn't do much yeah having watched it through i connect the dots and stuff but i could see somebody watching it through the first time and be like who is this yeah what is yeah he? i mean what? it's a short season and he does we do see him like pretty much anytime we see the master we see the anointed one with him yeah in actuality what does he actually do yeah we don't i we mean don't i guess really... he fulfills the prophecy that the child she will not know him she will not catch him and he'll lead her into hell but uh, yeah it's it's kind of odd how does xander know where angel lives i almost read that down and then i felt like it was too nitpicky i was like no, I'm not no I'm it's not, not nitpicky at all why in the world would he know where angel lives yeah i yeah great question yeah yeah he shows up at his apartment like and actually there, for and that matter how before. did how did giles have his phone number i had that down too i was like angel has a landline now did we know that did i we... mean maybe when where does that utility bill go to angel well yeah great question uh well i think over the years he's amassed wealth probably not legally but he has amassed wealth because clearly but he's like dead he has a government has identification things. for yeah yeah i guess i mean you can find you know some dead person's social security number i guess so there's yeah. fraud involved for sure he's just he has no choice he can't legally have it. And I, I guess if you're going to operate in the 90s, you do need a feeling you'll figure it out somehow. I don't know. I don't know. The yeah. the, the, the knowing where he lives, though, that's sus. Because, like, the phone number I can get because there was a point where Angel came to Giles. And Gile, and they had the exchange, and Giles was like, oh, where are the book? And he was like, I think I can get you the book. So Angel may have get, given his phone number then to be like, I'll, you know, I can call you about it or whatever. Or call me if you think of something else kind of thing. But. Yeah, I don't know where in the world Xander would have gotten Angel's address. Because it's not like he'd be in the phone book. Right. True. Um, the, the question I have about this scene, it, it, um, it is a nice moment from Xander. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm wondering what Angel's thought process is. Like, he's not super jazzed or gung-ho about going and helping right away. And I'm just, given the scene before where he's like, do you want to... Do you, do you think I want to see anything happen to you when he says that to Buffy? Right. Like, why? Yeah. You haven't left right. Like, I think, I think from like a script writing perspective, like they, this was a, this was a development moment for Xander and I totally get that. 
Yeah. But just the character for Angel. I'm like, what are you, what is going through your mind here? I think maybe it's the, maybe he was already thinking of something to do. Mm-hmm. And it, so it just like pisses him off that like Xander comes to. Mm, he's a little jealous. Right. Or that it's, or he's just annoyed by Xander's presence. It's like this child who thinks yeah. he can come do something. So maybe. I think like, he pulls a cross out on me. Yeah. 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 I mean, they're never going to get along. Yeah, so maybe he was already at home thinking of what to do. And we have we have seen that there are times that Angel is scared. Mm-hmm. He's definitely intimidated by the master and his people. But that is a good point of like, well, it's not like it's not like Xander shows up and Angel is saddling up to go help Buffy. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's a fair point, I think. And it's not like Angel contradicts him and goes, well, what are you going to do? I've got this handled. Yeah. So I think it's a fair point. Well, luckily they do lead to action and save Buffy. Yeah. And I, lo- and I do love that. Oh, you're in love with her, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who isn't? I'm in love with Buffy. True that. So that, the Master's Lair, that would be such an impressive room to walk into. Would you be awestruck? I would be. All those candles. And it's just like, it's like walking into a really old cathedral. It's just like, it's impressive. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I would absolutely be impressed by by that room. <laughs> I love the master. Oh, good. The feeble banter portion of the fight. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's right, though. There is some serious water damage down there. He's been stuck there. It can't be super fun. I don't know. <laughs> well, it is a sunken church. That's We find that out through, like, context clues and stuff. Yeah. When he catches the arrow, that's pretty badass. Gotta oh, yeah. Team Master, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. He he, sho- he shows up. He's awesome. Um, Xander, you were checking out my neck. <laughs> I wasn't checking out your neck. Yeah. Checking yeah. Out. Um, <laughs> why don't the Scoobies have like an, like, in case of emergency bags? Like. Ooh, interesting. Like, what they, would should be have, like they should have holy water. They should have Holy steak. water. Yeah. This is your emergency backpack. Take it out with you if you're going to go confront the Master. Right. Yeah, or not just like in cut and confront the magic master of like here's just the reality of living in Sunnydale. Now that you know what's out there, like keep some holy water on you. Yeah, right. that makes sense. Bring some basic first aid supplies. Yeah, like the same way that you have, you know, little keychains that have hand sanitizer, like that, but ho- holy water. Yeah, that's a good point. Or yeah. or how do you not immediately go out and buy a cross necklace? Mm-hmm. On, like, a really long chain so you don't come off, like, some religious freak. But, like, no. (laughs) How, a question I had that I knew, we knew the answer to. I've just forgotten it. How did the master end up getting in prison there? Did he piss off the wrong person? What happened? Great question. Um, maybe it was a slayer? Or, I don't actually think we're given a specific answer. Oh, I, I mean, he research. says something about like, and they trapped me in this place of worship. Yeah, but it's that's pretty much all we get. See, I wonder if there's some Buffy lore out there that knows. For uh, sure. Probably, probably. It'd be interesting. To, I'll yeah. report back, listeners. Yeah, or listeners report to us if you know the answer. Yeah, um, we do not claim to be all knowing, so definitely, uh, we're open to learn. Reach out if you know the answer. I would love to hear that. That would be a really cool prequel show about the master. That would be a cool prequel show. And some medieval slayers. That'd be badass. We thought of a few prequel ideas. Yeah, I'm happy to add my name on those producer credits and stuff. I think they're, (laughs) I think we are ripe for vampire content. Vampires will never go out of style. Will you act Uh, in them too? Fuck yeah. I won't direct, but. Yeah. All right. Directors, producers, whoever does this type of thing, you've been put on notice. Yep. So she fell and her ponytail came out? Really? Oh, I didn't pick up that detail. Man, you've picked up on a few good details. I am I am so I got so nitpicky. Like also the the master he claims to have like all this power from her, but he like was barely on her neck. Yeah. That is kind of a missed opportunity for She dies, but it's not because of him. Yeah, like, dude, you had a, and and from what we know, Slayer's blood is sweet. Mm-hmm. Like, not only did your mistake here lead to your death, but you missed out on an opportunity for a few reasons here. I mean, 
maybe maybe he's just like really good at it. Like he's just like really efficient. Because we do see on display some old school vampire's powers. He clearly does a thrall kind of thing where he gets he her to like let her defenses he didn't drain down. All of her, if, he, if he had drained all of her blood, then she would have been dead. Don't. No, I mean, he clearly did enough to weaken her so that when she, when he flops her over into the, the pool of water, she doesn't get up. Because it's not like, I mean, it's, it's so shallow. It's not like she couldn't get up. Yeah. But she's clearly just so weak. That she doesn't. Or she passed out or something. Or she passed out. No, dude, out. Yeah, dude didn't like, drink enough blood. You're, I don't think so. You are a loser. You're a loser. I think that's a, I think that's a directorial yeah. misstep. I think they should have held that a little longer. But I don't know. But yeah, when she, when Xander <laughs> and Angel pull her out of the pool, suddenly her hair is out of the ponytail. I'm like, mm, I don't buy it. She fell face forward. She passed out. <laughs> that's so she funny. She was clearly really passed out enough that she drowned. <laughs> How did that hair tie come out? And and her like clip that had her hair back. Just, so I, scuffle. She didn't vigorously oh God, like detail. fight him at all. There was no scuffle. I'm just saying. Yeah, this little this little area is fraught with uh missteps. Cause then we have Angel saying, Well, you have to give her CPR. I have no breath. Right after he finishes panting. Right. Yeah. And yeah, spe- and speaking, which requires requires air to pass your vocal cords. Yeah, I did notice that. Yeah, this whole yeah. There's just I, there's I, really just no excuse for it. You just have to get get over it. Yeah, it just has to be. Yeah, you're just gonna have to accept it because there isn't really some like it'll come up in season two. Oh, wait, no, it won't come up. In, there's really no good reason why we are drawing the line at vampires don't have. I get the reflection thing that's come up before, but there, I don't see a compelling reason for right. vampires don't. Yeah. Breathe. When we can see the human actors breathing. Exactly. In exactly. Yeah. And there's all sorts of things they do, like spike smokes all the time. Yeah. And clearly we find out that there's blood flow somehow. <laughs> so, we do find that out. Yeah. And to I don't think they mention anything else about like, I have no breath. I don't think that comes up again. So I think that is just a a plot hole that they like had in there so that it was Xander giving her CPR. So I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah. That's just one of the things that I've I notice every single time I watch it and then I have to consciously go, close that door, walk, walk away, walk down the hall. It I call that putting it in the basement. Yeah, I have to put it in the basement. So when they're back at the high school, Buffy it- First of all, the sequence leading up to it oh, is super yeah. badass. But uh, Buffy is walking up to the ceiling to confront the master, and she and she's like, "Angel, Xander, guard the door here. Angel, put your game face on." Mm-hmm. And she's talking about him yep. going game face. Does going into vampire mode make them stronger? Uh, like why? Why do? Why does he have to? Because he's that? scary. Oh, okay. Like I think it might just she's be like, an intimidation. I think it might yeah. just be an intimidation factor. Or it's like another way of saying like, "Get ready." I mean, I do Come think on, she literally doing... means put your game face on. I think she literally means oh, like vamp out. Uh, yeah, right. But it's also another way of saying, like, it may not give him yeah. more power, but Psyching it's like, up a, kind it's of like thing. a get like, yeah, weird I think about fa- it. I think the practical yeah. part of it is just like the intimidation factor Yeah. of like, yeah. I'm not just some other human. Although sometimes that, you know, fake in the mouth pretending to be a human might be to your advantage. But yeah, I think it's just a, a power move. I like power moves. Yeah. I love uh, Cordelia driving through the school. Yeah, yeah. Which we learned that she is a better driver now. The last time we Clearly. saw her drive, she like went blind and was struggling. So she got her license. That's good news. I yeah. I mean, she may have like talked her way through it or something. Who knows? Who knows? But she she has one and she has a car. Of course, we generally walk there. Well, you know. Yeah. Got somewhere to be. You know. Yeah, and I say at a girl power walk. Buffy is definitely strutting. Yeah, she's, it's a strut for sure. So in the library, we start to see the hell now open and the yeah, ew, creatures. Ew, 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 It's slimy. Why does it have to oh, be slimy? Oh, it's so wet. Oh. And like tendrily. Yeah, I, I'm not, I, I am I not it. about tentacles. It. Cephalopods creep me out. It's gross. Burn it with fire. Yep. Seriously. Yep. I love, so Cord- Cordelia is being attacked through the window and then she bites the hand of the vampire. <laughs> see how you like it. <laughs> Love it, Cordelia. Cordelia, Ugh. you are a queen. What a champ. 
so when Buffy actually does get into the race and confronts mm-hmm. the master, there are just so many quotes, oh, so many good God. quotes. Yes, yes. I may be dead, but I'm still pretty, which is more than I can say for you. Savage. Yes, yeah. And that was one of the, that was the quote for that episode for the DVD menu. Oh, yeah. Yep, that was a good one. I like that she, he tries to do the same hypnosis thing mm-hmm. and she plays along. Yep. But it's not actually working. You have fruit punch mouth. You. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love, you're that amped about hell. Go there. Yes. I had that one written down too. Oh, that was awesome. Also, Xander gets in a good punch. Snap. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. I he noticed did. that. He did I was... get in a good punch. I was glad that he got, yeah, he got the cross action and yeah, he got a sweet punch in. Yep. Um, I think the master's death sequence is so cool. Mm-hmm. As he, Buffy throws him through the ceiling and he lands on the wood piece that has like emerged from the table or something. Mm-hmm. And you just see him like disintegrate. I think it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's another one of those like, let's not pick that, pick that scab of like why he ha- he leaves behind a skeleton and others don't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's something about him being a special uber vamp, whatever. Yeah, I'm not mad about that. No, As I was doing the research, no. there were forums that were not thrilled about that. But I'm like, no, he's one yeah, of the most ancient whatever. vampires. I can I can see. I don't know. I get right. it. Right. Like, we don't know the rules. Like, uh, who knows? Yeah. Pretty sure Cordelia is officially initiated now. Yeah. Once you've been through that type of apocalypse together, it's done, isn't it? Yeah. Well, and she, like, before she's been around stuff and around, like, like death and stuff. But some of that was just, like, well, humans were dead and, you know, she was probably fed the same party line that everybody else was, you know, gang members, whatever it was. But she was fighting. She saw the monster that was coming up from the Hellmouth. That's that was her own eyes. And she was fighting and they they say vampires like they just like say it out loud. So, yeah. Fairly. She also saved Willow and Miss Calendar. Right. She drives up and she's like, get in. They would have died. Yeah. Cordy taking action and like so clearly seeing all these like messed up dudes and stuff. So. Yeah, she's now she now knows knows all, and she clearly someone explains, you know, why they all know what they know and why they're all the ones. I mean, she no, she has noticed, and she has remarked on that, like, well, Buffy, you're always around whatever weird stuff that's going on. I like this last quote from Buffy as they're walking out. She goes, "He's not going anywhere, loser. <laughs> <laughs> he is a loser. You he won. Is. Sure, we saved the world. I say we party. Yeah." Oh, yeah. so good. Although, but like, I agree. He's not, he's clearly not going anywhere. But like, I, you're just going to leave the skeleton there for someone. Like, the police are surely going to come and like just find a body. Like, I mean, later we've, later we, next season, we'll find out that like they clearly saved the bones and they buried them and stuff. But like, I don't know. You're just going to leave all that mayhem, leave the skeleton mm. for someone else to discover. No, I for sure would have gone to the bar right away. 100%. Yeah, I would have left the boats. Yeah, no, sorry. Or yeah. I feel like I feel like we could have found like a duffel like real quick before we left. Throw the <laughs> bones in. Like they're just bones. Like, just, but just like throw, throw a it. sheet on top. Do something. Yeah, just, like, like, just yeah. like do something quick and then yeah, but I'm like, I guess I'm that person who while my food cools a bit after cooking, I do the dishes so it's just done and then I go eat. You are very responsible. I try. I do. I try. But yeah, and I thought that was so cute when An- Angel says, uh, by the way, I really like your dress. She's like, yeah, it's a, it's been a hit. I'm like, hey, hottie with a body complimented you. Take the compliment. I uh, I have this piece of trivia in here, too. That line was not in the original script. It was added in production, which I think is Aww, neat. Cute. Uh, light, lightens things up a little bit there right at the end. Yeah. Um, The other piece of trivia I have, people can look to our social media to see it, too. but. Sarah Michelle Gellar, the actress who plays Buffy, kept that prom dress. She took an Instagram picture in it during lockdown that says something like Slayers stay home, like something, something like that. I cannot yeah. believe I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. So not only did she keep the prom dress, but she still it's, fits it. It fits in it. Yeah. 24 years later uh-huh. or something, right? At that point. At the same yeah. time, impressed and amazed and also like pissed. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty neat though. Yeah, she kept I'm glad she got to That's keep that amazing. dress. I do it's love that. It's an iconic thing. 
Man, Allie, season one finale. What a season. What an experience doing this together. I, I wonder if we give some space to think about this experience overall. Yeah. And specifically, what I'm wondering is, we have said along the way that we pick up something new each time we do a Buffy rewatch. That's one of our favorite things about the show. Absolutely. What did you pick up on this time? Um, I think kind of a sad reality about myself is watching back and identifying more or at least excusing more the adults like i guess i identify a little more with them now than i do with the kids hmm, interesting i find myself you know excusing joyce excusing giles and like you know looking at snyder and being like i don't know he has a point which is definitely not who you're supposed to side with <laughs> but i'm like you know he doesn't know all the information so i don't know can you blame him People keep dying at a school. He's just trying to keep shit together. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be a little mean too. Right, like as someone who has taught and teaching does not bring out the best in me. One of the many oh. reasons why I do not teach. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, for me, for me, for me, not for you, not for you, not for you, for me. Sorry. I'm also not good at teaching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, for my time, for my time, my brief periods where I've directed and where I've taught, like I... I do not. There's a there's so much that goes into it, and I'm just like, you students just don't understand. Should give your teachers more credit. Um, there's a reason why they hide whiskey bottles in their uh, drawers at school. <laughs> yeah, so that's just been a sad reality. Uh, but also just uh, very satisfied. I'm always I try to check myself of like, oh, do I just love this show because I've grown up with it? You know, kind of those things that you know, if you saw it at a different time, would it have been as good? Nope. Every time I go back, I'm like, oh yeah, it is hundred percent quality grade a beef that's amazing there's a reason why it has struck so many people watching it even later in life even coming to it later not while it was on air mm -hmm. what about you i i agree with everything that you said i i think i give the adults more grace than i did i also question different things than mm -hmm. i did before like i spend a lot of time not so much this season. I certainly do in future seasons, thinking about how problematic it is the like adults kid romantic relationships that start to happen. Yeah. So like but I never considered that as I was watching it through the first time. Mm -hmm. The other thing the other thing too, I, I pick up different lessons like Sid the dummy mm -hmm. is that that's a powerful episode for a lot of reasons. But but this time when I was watching it through, I thought more about his what he went through like he yeah. was like the idea of being trapped in the dummy body and still carrying out this duty and then and then like i find i found myself thinking more about marcy and the last episode yeah and how horrible it can feel to be invisible i and i just think that's something that's so powerful to your point about the show that you can watch it over and over again and a it still totally stands up it is still an amazing show absolutely but then B, you can, like, different aspects of it can be powerful to you each time you watch it. And I think that's one of the reasons why it is as good as it is, is their characters are three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. So even the villains, it's not just, okay, one note, you're a bad guy. I mean, even the master is weirdly likable. Yeah, he's charming. Yeah, he's got charm to it. To him, You know, he references pop culture. So, and I think that's what, makes a good show something that my family and i talk about when we when we discuss movies and stuff is that i think you really do have to have a well-balanced show you have to have comedy you have to have sad things like because life is three-dimensional people are three-dimensional people are not all good or all bad yeah there's more there's more nuance there that the show does a really good job of capturing yeah so I, I really like that and they do they do ultimately make it pretty clear like like marcy you can understand and empathize like how she got to where she was but then it was very clear that she needed to be taken down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So, like, at the end of the day, it does do a great job of, like, giving you someone to root for. And I think that's always great. I think I noticed more of the fashion looking back, having taken some classes on costume design and having been a costume designer myself. I noticed a lot more of that. And being a fan of just fashion as a person, especially 90s fashion. I was going to say, as as we're in this moment where 90s fashion is kind of 100%. making a resurgence and we're far enough away from the 90s it is interesting not to that see far though that. it is very strange seeing fashions come back around from times that we lived in yeah right 
<laughs> Although it's nice because, of course, like when those fashions were at their height, we were in elementary school. I couldn't wear those mini skirts and stuff. And so like now I can dress like the popular girls in the movies that I grew up watching. And I love it. <laughs> Fulfilling a lot of dreams here. Yeah. Something else that I've that I definitely noticed just as a, as an actor and as someone who has now worked and worked working. Oh, my God. Uh, someone who has worked in film. There were some fun things that I thought about, that I noticed. That was just cool to see it with that lens. Given your professional experience, yeah. Yeah. And just kind of thinking about like, oh, that would have been cool to be in that scene. Or, huh, I wonder how many takes that took. Or how long they were standing around the bronze. Or mm, That is interesting. The logistical elements. The other question I have for you is, uh, we, we, we talked briefly about ourselves in the first episode. We talked about ourselves during this all the time. But having just finished discussing this episode we're thinking about season one overall it's first in your minds what does Buffy mean to you woof well I think she's always been a role model and I think as we go through life we have different role models we have multiple role models but I think it's also always been a touchstone something that kind of became a defining factor for me like almost part of a part of my personality because it was my favorite television show for so long. And I would still say it is a favorite, but so many, there's so many components that go into what is your, your like number one favorite kind of thing. But it's something that I've always gone back to of the kinds of parts I want to play, the effect I want to have on people, the effect that a series can have on a person, the way that, so I have spread the gospel of Buffy uh, with several people over my life. And it has been a bonding factor. You know, so, so many people can say that we binge Buffy on DVD before, you know, binge watching was like a codified mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a, a lot of people have spent nights in my basement, my, the basement of my parents' house watching Buffy DVDs in the dark. Yeah, You know, whether it was my unfinished basement or whether it was later on with the nice basement and pulling the air mattress in front of the TV uh, and doing that, you know, shouting out to you and Anna and Asha, just all these people that this was something that brought us together. And it became kind of a common language, these quotes and these characters. That's been really beautiful. And it's really, you know, I think I maybe mentioned on another episode, I wrote a college essay about Buffy and about how her quote from the fourth season in Hush, fortune favors the brave. Mm. I know some people say bold, but Buffy says brave. Therefore, that is what the correct quote is. Um, <laughs> and I've looked it up. Basically, the internet says it's been said both ways. But I've used that as a mantra of, you know, good things come from taking risks. Mm. And mm -hmm. the times in my life where I, you know, asked somebody out or whatever, even if it didn't go best case scenario, I was always glad that I did it. And something good came out of it, whether it was just, oh, wow, I can do hard things or just that it felt good to put myself out there or, you know, whatever it was. Good things can come back to you when you take those risks, when you take chances. And who better to take chances on than yourself? And there's nothing more painful than, well, I won't say nothing. More. It is painful wondering about what if you had done something. Exactly. What if I had gone for it? Right. What if I, I didn't? What if I, what if I had done it? You know? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm sure we all have stories of people in our lives who maybe, you know, didn't take the chance. And you can kind of see where, where they have that what if. And yeah. how awful, how awful is that question? What if, you know, so better just to, just to do it and not have that question. I think for me, Buffy was so powerful to me growing up for a lot of reasons, but one of them was when I was either didn't know that I was gay, but I felt like I was different somehow, or I knew I was gay, but I wasn't out, or mm -hmm. I was out, but it was in that kind of uncomfortable phase where it wasn't super, like, I felt like, I don't know if I would want to be in Buffy's world, because there's a lot of <laughs> monsters there, and a lot of death, and that doesn't sound like, it. but I felt like I would be accepted, like, I mm -hmm. could, I could fit into her crew and be celebrated. Like she doesn't, Buffy puts her friend above everything mm -hmm. and like the values of standing up for the weakest person in the room or I don't know, it just taught me like I work for a social justice organization and I wonder how many of those values I like my organization 
fights for people in court. Like, I wonder mm -hmm. how many of these values I learned from, I don't know. I love Buffy. It's taught me a lot. Oh, it's such a safe space for me. And I do think, I mean, later seasons will show why it definitely has themes relating to LGBTQIA, I think. Sorry, I'm sure I'm leaving out letters. But the queer community in the larger sense, it definitely became a popular show amongst that crowd. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember there were certain networks. I'm trying to remember, like, it would, sh it would show reruns. Logo is one of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, they definitely, once Buffy was syndicated, they showed reruns, you know, after the L word and things like that. And yeah. so I know it, it means it means a lot to that community, which is really great. And I think just, like, the outcasts in general. Yeah. Like, the nerds felt safe because they saw themselves in Willow. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you feel outcast. Yeah. For. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Lovely. Yeah. And I think it is, a, there's a lot of, I mean, Cordelia touches on this, like, oh, you think it's so easy being me? You think everything's sunshine and rainbows? You know, so like what, for whatever you feel an outside feeling for. Mm -hmm. And I think no one is safe from that. Mm -hmm. I certainly wasn't a loser, wasn't the popular kid. I was just some comfortable medium, but there were still times I felt on the outside or not quite accepted and those kinds of things. And it was cool that the heroine of this story is technically a loser, like as from the opinion of the school. And so that's kind of cool. And she kind of chose to be the loser. She could have been friends with Cordelia, but she was horrified by how Cordelia treated Willow. In, yeah. And what is that? The first episode? Yeah. First episode. Like she. Yeah. So I, I think that's an important point, too. Like she, Buffy could have done her L.A. Mm -hmm. thing, but she didn't. Yeah. There was that conscious choice that she could have gone the harmony route and pushed down her own feelings and just been a yes sayer uh but she didn't which is cool that's why she's big bad buffy you know oh, buffy i love you so much uh, so i have i have a question for you actually Ooh. um just a little quick one so you were the one who got me to start this podcast thinking forward to our our next season what do you foresee what do you what visions do you have for our show this little show that we've started Oh, this little show that we've started, this baby we've created together, Allie. Mm. <laughs> Don't think about that too much. Hmm. I see hmm. something that I've appreciated about how we've done this process, Allie, and I hope that it comes across to we've been so conscious that this is for fun. We want people to feel like they are with us on the couch watching the show, just having a good time. Like we yeah. have been so deliberate. And it's interesting that we've been so focused on, we talked about this after we recorded last time and we're recording now, LOL. So maybe if that was supposed to be off recording talk, oops. It's interesting. We were heading into this and we were like, this feels like it's, it could be, it could quickly get overwhelming. Man, this is a lot of responsibility. We don't want it to feel that way. And yet it's, this has given me the boost to get through kind of hard times it's been a it's been a rough yeah. thing like work and life and absolutely world things and it's been a boost for me so i i think that's what i want as people start listening to it and we put this out into the world i think i just want to stay centered in that stay grounded in this is for you and me to have fun and to have an excuse to talk to each other every week and it's to spread our love of buffy and it's to hopefully make people see something new in the show and be like they're watching it and having a good time along with us i love that that was a long-winded way to answer that question i got to the answer eventually what do you No, i like it you answer the question now well i think about the podcasts that i listen to and the communities i'm a part of and i hope that we form a community like that i hope that we can become something that somebody looks forward to. It doesn't have to be a lot of people, but you know, if we can help somebody have a more enjoyable commute to work or if, or at work while you're doing some menial tasks, something that can entertain you. Um, and I think I'd like for people to maybe analyze a bit more, maybe help somebody understand something that they didn't before about Buffy or appreciate it in a new way, almost in an academic sense. Cause I think there is so much that you can unpack about Buffy. And I think that's one of the reasons why we love it, because there's so much you can get out of it. It's legit study material. Yeah, exactly. So I hope that in the seasons to come, maybe we can 
again, fingers crossed, because we've recorded all of these episodes before we have published any of them, um, I hope to have more audience interaction. Maybe have stories from listeners of what Buffy means to them. Yeah. Or things that they interpreted or drew from, you know, some metaphor that they pulled out that maybe we didn't notice. Um, learning from our audience as much as hopefully they learn from us. Oh, that would be so cool. I know, right? I just, I love that community. I love, there's a lot of shows that I, I have been taking as role models for our show. How, you know, I see how those communities interact and I'd like that for us. So I'd love, I love to have the experience of like seeing somebody wear our merch. Ah! Right? Like how cool would that be? Hey, listeners, we have the lookout. We're going to have stickers pretty soon. Yeah, and who knows? Who knows what else we can slap our logo on? Because it is a bitchin' logo. Oh my god! I want a hat. And at at this point of recording, we haven't showed anybody. Like none of the promos out there, social media is enough. So we're just like sitting on our music and our logo. Like, oh, it's just yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, like, like I've, I've I've shown my partner, but he isn't a Buffy fan. Like he's not not a Buffy fan, but like he just like didn't really watch it. So we can't like. I just feel like you have to be a Buffy lover to like get it you know there's so So, much symbolism i know i have some i have some geek friends who i'm very excited to show to share this with that i think will really appreciate this oh so exciting another level for me personally not necessarily buffy it is very satisfying to have a podcast i grew up with podcasting i grew up around podcasters i grew up going to conventions and hanging out with them and i always dreamed of having a podcast so this is very satisfying to little 13 year old me who dreamed of having her own podcast i've needed something else in my life i don't know if this if this relates to the point that you just made exactly but but i have work that i do that's mm-hmm. a strong identity for me i have my dogs i have my partner i have I know, a video game i play that i've been playing for over a decade which feels like a pretty big part of my identity but but i've needed like something ugh, i just feel fulfilled in a different yeah. way and it feels nice it is definitely like scratched an itch that I didn't really realize I had. Yeah. 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 And like you and like you said earlier, this I when you first proposed the idea of oh, we should have a podcast watching Buffy and stuff and talking about it, I was like, oh God, I cannot start your podcast right now. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, oh man, I can't not do this. Cause I was just like the idea just stuck in my head. And from one, it's actually been a lot easier working with you and doing the things and stuff than I than I had anticipated. Like you said, it has been a fun thing in my life. It has been something that I look forward to doing. So that has been a pleasant surprise. Mm. I love you, Allie. We work well together. I love you, Nicholas Lee Mercer. On this little passion project we've started. Yes, I'm very passionate about this. This is great. And I can't wait to see how passionate everybody else gets because I'm going to put positivity out there and manifest that other people will love and find this show. I'm putting it out there. We are going to, absolutely, we're going to manifest it. Well, I think that about does it for this episode and this first season. We did it, Nick. Huh? Nicholas, we did it. We, we did, did a it? podcast. Thank you so what? much for joining us on this wild journey. And we hope you'll join us again next season where we'll kick off things with season two, episode one, When She Was Bad. In two episodes, me and that felt good. Yeah. If you are incredible listeners and vibrant community that we're manifesting, are just too excited to wait until our next episode to chat, and I have a lot to say, so I hope you'll engage with us. Please send us an email at tabula rasa bpod at gmail.com. That is T A B U L A R A S A B P O D at gmail.com. And you can also say hello to us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at, at Tabula Rasa B. Allie? Yes. People want to talk with you. Where do they find you on social media? Of course they do. Well, you can find me at DaughterPick, D A U G H T E R P I C K, on Twitter and Instagram. And I am at Future Black Cat, spelled like it sounds, on TikTok. And then if you would like to support me as an artist, uh, maybe see some kind of behind the scenes, I give a not so weekly update, infrequently weekly update, uh, then you can join me over at buymeacoffee.com slash Allie Press, A-L-L-I-E, 
P-R-E-S-S. And yeah, join a membership, toss some money my way. Absolutely. Luckily, all of those social media handles are in the description. Signing off on season one. Woo! Closing the book on this. Everybody make proud choices. Make proud choices, everyone. We love you. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Tabula Rasa Bitches is hosted by Ali Press and Nick Mercer. With music by Infoton Cult, artwork by Charlotte Fleming Design, and consultation by Evo Terra.